Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Zach Drew. And I'm Andrew Bellers. I got really sick last week. Um, I did a couple of shows with Pastor Jim Baker, uh, the Jim Baker Show at, down at Morningside in Blue Eye, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Came back home, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was feeling yeah. fine down there. But Thursday, we, t- we typically film on Friday mornings. And so whenever you watch on YouTube and Facebook, we actually film that very same day. Um, but yeah, I got crazy sick. I mean, I mean, crazy sick. I still tried to do the show, I even came in here, had my jacket on, and I was, I felt like I was dying. And I just said, Bellers, I, there is no way I can do the show today. I'm sorry. And so, um, and then just like it was here, it was just gone. Yeah. And then that Sunday, I was totally fine. Felt great. So I'm just really, really uh, grateful to be back with you this week. Um, I had a great time down at uh, uh, doing the Jim Baker show with Jim and Lori uh, Baker. We really talked a lot about um, hyperinflation um, and different uh, agendas that are seeking to destroy America, Mm -hmm. specifically through cultural Marxism. Um, and one of the things that we discussed while I was down there was critical race theory. Yeah. And so I, I'm actually going to kind of continue that uh, thought, that, that, that stream of thinking for today's program. Because we discussed some things on the Jim Baker show, and maybe you're tuning in and, and you watched uh, that show. We talked about how critical race theory will destroy America if it's not stopped. And it, and it seeks to destroy the church as well. Destroying America, yeah, it's very important, but they're seeking to destroy the church. That is their end goal. And that is why we must know so much about these uh, different philosophies, these, some of these fine sounding philosophies that have infiltrated the church that Paul warned us against. Mm -hmm. Critical race theory, we talked about this, how it's a, a key tenet of cultural Marxism. And it provides a lens in which to view the world. Everything is rooted in, in, in racism. It, it is not about the individual racism. It's not about racism in, in your heart anymore. It's not about that. We all know that's bad. Only whenever it is about racism in your heart, because then that's still bad. I mean, they, you know, it's like they, they want it both ways, right? Mm-hmm. But you see, it's more about the system, how the system in and of itself is, is racist. And racism is the new original sin. And every single white person is guilty because they are privileged by the system. This is what they teach. The only way for white people to uh, atone for their sin of racism is to become an ally and engage in anti-racist activism. This is the religion of anti-racism founded on the bedrock of critical race theory. So whenever I say the religion of anti-racism, this book called Fault Lines, by Vodi Bakum is the most amazing book I have read. As you know, you've been watching the show for, for years. I've been talking about critical race theory and critical theory and Marxism, cultural Marxism for a long time. Mm-hmm. I read this book a, a couple of months ago and it is the best book on critical race theory that is out there. Yeah. So much of my thoughts of, of what I've even been speaking about lately is found in this book. You need to go get it. I don't have it. I'm not connected with Vody Buckham or his ministry. We don't offer books. Yeah. Go to his website. I'm sure you type in his name. It'll be there. Go to Amazon, whatever. Do what you need to do to get this book by Vody Buckham called Fault Lines, The Social Justice Movement and Evangelicalism's Looming Catastrophe. Get it. It's amazing. It'll change your life. Critical race theory is literally being taught in thousands and thousands and thousands of schools throughout the country right now. It rewrites history. It changes the definition of words. It has become a fault line in the church. As I just said, fault line by Vody Bauckham. We're still in the intro. On today's show, we're going to be talking about several different things. One, you cannot be a Christian and be for social justice. Two, the most lethal threat in our homeland today is white supremacy, according to the Biden administration. Three, some of the latest CRT articles. Four, why you should be incredibly weary before reading Christianity Today, one of the largest Christian magazines in circulation. Yes, be weary of reading 
what they publish. I'm going to show you why. We're going to be talking about a proposed amendment to the Constitution of the United States. And it will literally be the creation, the a proposed amendment is the creation of the DOA, the Department of Anti-Racism. And lastly, what is the response of the church? What should it be to all of these things? All of this and more on today's show. If you want to get involved, we had one terrific donation after I, I said it um, last week. We are totally down these last two months. Everybody's vacationing. You're not watching TV. You're not watching the Zach Drew show. And uh, we absolutely felt it big time these last eight weeks. If you want to yeah. get involved, please do go to the website, ZachDrewShow.com. Click the bright orange donate button or give us uh, or give to IGBY, which stands for I go before you. That's what we named the whole thing. I go before you. Promise that God gave Joshua and Deuteronomy. Write to us at IGBY PO Box 797, Decatur, Illinois 62525. Let's talk about all these things and more right after this. All right, so we're going to start out light with the two first topics being Christianity and social justice. Yeah. And then we're going to move to the white supremacy in the Biden administration. These two topics are the lighter topics of today's program, okay? Then we're going to get into the heavy hitters. But I need to lay the foundation like I try to every week. You cannot be a Christian and be for social justice, which is such a conundrum for Christians, such a point of conflict, because it's like, well, why wouldn't Christians be for justice? Who cares if it's for social justice or whatever, just justice in the world. Of course, Christians should be for justice. It's a tricky thing. Josh Bice, PhD, pastor of Praise Mill Baptist Church in Douglasville, Georgia, and founder of president of G3 Ministries, an amazing ministry, said this. The difficulty with social justice is that it appears to be virtuous and it sounds Christian when it's being employed by Christian leaders, which it is. However, social justice is one of the most devious and destructive movements the church has faced in the last 100 years. This is why we cannot pursue social justice. I'm, I'm going to explain to you in just a moment, because listen, it is okay for Christians to pursue regular justice. That's right. Because God is just. Pursue peace, pursue unity, pursue these things. These are biblical mandates. But to pursue social justice is not the same thing. Yeah, I saw um, I saw an interview with a very well-respected res um, pastor, someone that I really respect, that um, is sort of a proponent for social justice. And there was an interview. He's a pastor. He's a pastor. Oh, I know. Oh, it's a, I know. He's the he's the prophet of a it's a of the Southern Baptist. He's a teacher. Right? Uh, yeah, he's... he's oh, I know. I know. Uh, well, well, no, not him. There's, there's, oh, there's lots, I guess. I don't want to name him because I really do like him and I don't want to paint him in a bad light. But um, he was being asked, what are, when we're talking about social justice, what are the things that we're talking about? And answering the question, he, he listed out a whole great list of things that the church really should care about. And I remember watching this thinking, he's got it so wrong. <laughs> these are these are matters of true biblical justice. Yeah. But when when we hear the word social justice, this is not at totally all different. It's totally different. Let me ask you a question. Do you have phalanges? <laughs> okay. Do you have fingers? Do you have some? Yeah. If you don't go get some. But if you have phalanges and you have Wi-Fi, use your phalanges. Go to Google and type in definition, social justice, okay? This is what it's going to say. This is the actual definition. Justice in terms of the distribution of wealth, opportunities, and privileges within a society. It is a Marxist, a cultural Marxism, socialist definition. They have changed the... It is not justice. That's they right. They have changed the word. They have changed the definition. It does not mean justice. Whenever you say, I am for social justice, you are saying, I am for the distribution of wealth. That's right. Let's redistribute. Let's let's distribute among everybody equal. We're all going to be equal, equally miserable and equally poor. Distribution of opportunities and privileges within a society. It's this cultural Marxism 101, and they're getting people rallied around it because they change the definition of words. The true definition of just is this, guided by truth, reason, justice, and fairness. Nothing to do with the definition of social justice. 
Social justice is antithetical to the gospel. It contradicts the gospel. You cannot be for Marxism and be a Christian. They do, it's like oil and water. They do not mix. Yeah. Karl Marx is a rabid atheist. He hated Christians and he hated capitalism. <coughs> and cultural Marxism, remember that cultural Marxism, Antonio Gramsci, he's the one that kind of repainted the barn, yeah. gave a new light to Marxism, now being cultural Marxism. Yeah, right? he's the one who uh, invented cultural, cultural hegemony. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. He, he repainted it, but it's still the same goal to destroy capitalism. That's right. And they don't care how they do it. That's why they're hijacking right now uh, an entire people group, not color, people group. Mm -hmm. White people, black people, I mean, it's brown people that are getting behind these massive movements. They're manipulated. They don't care about your feelings. They don't care about the injustices that you've experienced. They don't care if anybody in your family has ever, and it doesn't happen all the time, but per, police brutality does happen. I mean, of course it's happened because there are some bad cops. It's a very small amount. Like there are bad things in any profession, bad doctors, bad dentists. I mean, have you seen my teeth? Bad dentists. There are bad dentists, out, but there are bad cops, of course, very small. So maybe your family has experienced police brutality or or uh, unjust racial profiling or whatever. They don't actually care. They're hijacking you to destroy this country, That's to destroy right. capitalism, which will destroy the country. And the ultimate goal in the cultural hegemony, we've talked about it on the show, the ultimate goal is to get to Christianity, to get yeah. to the church. And it really is. It, this whole thing is embedded in a religious nature, a religious um, terms and terminology, a religious structure um, and that's why Vody, he even, he even in his book, he, he re referred to this as anti-racism truly is a religion. It has its own canon. It has its own priesthood. It has its own cosmology. And, and remember, cosmology, it's the science of how, you know, the world was formed. We have a cosmology as Christians, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. Anti-racism has its own cosmology. We went through the first day, the second day, the third day, you know, the first day being on the first day in the religion of anti-racism, the white people created whiteness. That's the, that's part of their cosmology. Mm -hmm. On the second day, white people created white privilege. But on the third day, and we're only going to be discussing the third day, and then we're going to get into more heavy hitting content. On the third day, white people created white supremacy. It's part of their cosmology. Yeah. It's part of their religion. You join the religion, you believe in their cosmology because it changes the definition of words. Here's an article, put, the, put it on the screen. White supremacy is terrorism. Biden condemns terrorism in address. Here is the transcript of this particular section. And he says this, I'm not gonna read it all. And we won't ignore what our intelligence agencies, the three, many of our three letter intelligence agencies have determined to be the most lethal terrorist threat to the homeland today. White supremacy is terrorism. Lethal, look up, it's deadly, mm -hmm. blunt force of a deadly nature, lethal, kill, dead, no life. Terrorism, the most lethal terrorist threat. The number one in the country by our three letter agencies is white supremacy. Yeah, because you know, you just go down Main Street and you know, there's, there's the Klan. Right. You go down Main Street and you're just, you just have to put earplugs in your ears because everybody is just using racial slurs and beating up minorities. Well, what? Well, Kill, no, no, not beating up, killing. It's lethal threat. Well, that's the problem because, because our understanding of white supremacy, what he's saying, of course, can't be true. But when you redefine the word, then it makes sense. Exactly. You see, the left would say, I'm going to read a line here. This is actually from the Village Church Resources a far left, how to understand and address white privilege. This is what they talk, this is how they define white supremacy. Let's change the definition. White supremacy is a historically based, institutionally perpetuated system of exploitation and oppression of continents, nations, and peoples of color by white people and nations of the European continent for the purpose of maintaining and defending a system of wealth, power, and privilege. 
So basically white supremacy is any belief, behavior, or system that supports, promotes, or enhances white privilege. This is what Vody had to say on the subject. He said, it is important to note that white supremacy as used by the critical social justice movement doesn't mean what it used to mean. For many of us, the term white supremacy evokes strong images ranging from the Ku Klux Klan to Nazi regime, notes Daniel Hill in his influential book, White Awake. Then in a classic attempt to promote the redefinition of terms that CRT requires in order to advance the anti-racist worldview, he continues, quote, when we get past the emotional response to the term and consider its definition, we can see that it remains relevant. In other words, the word doesn't mean what it used to mean. So we don't have to feel the same way we used to about it. It also is far less provable in the context that someone's membership or status within the KKK. This is perfectly in keeping with Sensoy and D'Angelo's Is Everybody Really Equal? A mainstay in schools, of education throughout the United States. When we use the term white supremacy, this is what they say. We are not referring to extreme hate groups or bad racists. What? I'm gonna say that again. They're changing the definition. When we use the term white supremacy, we are not referring to extreme hate groups or bad racists. So whenever we use the word white supremacy, one thing you need to know is that we're not talking about white supremacy. Right. Listen, I'm going to start, listen, my dog, I'm going to start talking to you about for 10 minutes, all about my dog. He's a big old German shepherd. He's, you know, just a big old boy. He's at less than a year old. My dog, 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 dog. And then we go outside and you see about 110 pound pony out there. Well, now you got to understand. When I say dog, I don't mean dog. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, not in, the, not in the traditional context of what it conjures up in your mind is dog. Yeah. I actually mean, you might refer to it as a small horse or a pony, really. But yeah. so then <laughs> it's it doesn't make dog. sense. <laughs> when we're talking about white supremacy, we're not referring to extreme hate groups or bad racists. They write, OK, well, then tell us what the new. We use the term to capture the all encompassing dimensions of white privilege, dominance and assumed assumed. You know what they say about assuming? Oh, I know. I'm not going to say no, it. I'm not either. I'm gonna <laughs> put it up on the screen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and assume superiority in mainstream society. And if you are going to take this ride and get on board with anti-racist pursuits, you have to engage in the cognitive dissonance that comes when we attempt to ignore the definitions we know in an effort to apply the definitions we must use in order to adopt and apply this new worldview. You got to change a definition in order to adopt and apply the new worldview of critical race theory. Here is some examples of applying this new worldview. And these are all from 2020 and 2021. These are just headlines. Woke teachers want Shakespeare canceled. This is about white supremacy and colonization. Here's another mm. one. Elementary school kids taught that objectivity and perfectionism are racist traits of white supremacy. Same at that. Perfectionism is racist. Well, it's like when the Smithsonian said that, that principles of hard work are, are white supremacist. So perfectionism is white supremacy. It has nothing to do with white supremacy. You see, whenever you are a perfect, if you want to achieve perfection, to be a perfectionist, to, to strive, to be ambitious, to, to conquer your small business, to, to learn everything you can about a subject and make a living for yourself, perfectionist, this, this, this idea of going above and beyond, it goes actually, it has nothing to do with white supremacy. Remember how they just changed it. It has everything to do with Marxism. Yeah. They don't want you to be ambitious. They don't want you to be an overachiever. They don't want you to stick your head above the crowd because we're all equal. That's right. That's what it's about. It's not about, they're hijacking it. No, the next headline. Here's some more. Cambridge University panel. Winston Churchill, a white supremacist, leading empire worse than the Nazis. So that's insane. <laughs> Winston Churchill, he stuck his head above the crowd. Well, just, just think about looking, think about a person who looks back at history, who looks specifically 
at the World War II era, sees two men on the stage, sees Hitler and Winston Churchill, and says, this guy's the bad guy. Mm -hmm. How can you look at Winston Churchill and say he's the bad guy in this scenario? Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. insane. Um, Here's some (laughs) more. 1,200 public health experts advocate mass gatherings because, quote, white supremacy is bigger threat than COVID-19. That was back when all the riots and protests were happening last year. (laughs) Uh, ASU Dean writes book alleging that grading students' writing is, quote, white supremacy. Don't stick your head above the crowd. Yeah. Don't stick your head above the crowd. Don't stick your head above the crowd because it is – that's what socialism is. We all get the same check. Mm -hmm. We all live in the same houses. We all have the same dog named Skip. I mean, everything is, it's cloned. We are, we are carbon copies of our neighbor. Everyone is equal and we are ruled by the few. Mm-hmm. And let the robots do the work and tax them. That's right. <laughs> this one was really recent. It's similar to the last one. Professors say proper grammar is racist and perpetuates Whiteness. That was just within the last month. Uh, another one, National Archives Racism Task Force labels own rotunda example of structural racism. National Archives. So rotunda, <laughs> you know, the rotunda, you know, that's a, a structural, you know, it's a shape. Mm-hmm. There's many rotundas throughout the world, and National Archives Museum is a rotunda. And it is an example of structural racism. Okay. First off, you know, I actually saw Glenn Beck talk about this one. Can you imagine? He, I remember he, he asked on his, he asked his co-host Stu, when you think of task force, like what comes to mind? Like task force. I think of like the Navy SEALs or yeah, something. Yeah, the Navy SEALs are just like, just total head to toe military, you know, geared out, just crazy, like tough. Yeah. You know, we're going to take you down. Right. Right. The National Archives Racism Task Force. <laughs> it's like, what are they equipped with? Right. <laughs> What's even their goal? We're going to tickle you to death. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just like, it's the most like, it just seems so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. National Archives Racism Task Force labels own rotunda example of structural racism. And in a, and now in an in, in an infamous video, this content once again comes from fault lines. This particular section, which you need to go and get, and I need to make it clear once again. I literally do not benefit at all by you going and getting his book, but I benefit in knowing I have another ally at, in there, out there. You, if you read this book. I know I'll have another ally out there. Yeah. And that is why I want you to read it. So this quote comes from Fault Lines. So it's a, it's a now infamous video. Southern Baptist Theological Seminary Bravost Matthew Hall gives about as clear a summary of the anti-racist doctrine of white supremacy as one can because it has infiltrated the church in such a massive way. Everything... Definition of everything, all encompassing, nothing else, Mm -hmm. just simply everything. Everything that you assumed or thought was normal in the world, or everything you thought was true about your tradition, your denomination, and your own family. I'm going to pull the veil back and what look like this beautiful narrative of faithfulness and orthodoxy and of truth and righteousness and justice, I'm go- gonna, I'm gonna peel that back and I'm going to show you the rotting corpse of white supremacy that's underneath the surface. Can you imagine? And I don't know what's happening <laughs> with the Southern Baptist Convention, you know, in 2019, and I know it's kind of going back and forth, but in 2019, they voted upon a resolution that 
critical race, basically critical race theory was okay. Mm -hmm. And then you had other conservatives in the SBC that were just fighting against it vehemently. Yeah. And there is, I mean, we're seeing this in the, and, and, you know, like the Presbyterian church, you know, now you have, um, PCUSA and PCA, the Presbyterian church of, you know, whatever the two, they split. You're seeing a split. Mm -hmm. You're seeing this, this thing divide the church. And he says, so he says, I'm going to peel back and I'm going to show you the rotting corpse of white versus supremacy that's underneath the surface. So everything you thought you knew about your tradition, your denomination, everything you thought you knew about your own family. Thank you, righteous Matthew Hall, for pulling the veil back for me. Yeah. And letting me know that everything about my tradition, my denomination, and my family, your traditions, your denomination, your own family, listen to Matthew Hall because he's going to go ahead and pull the veil back for you. You don't have to do it. He's done the work for you. And he's going to show you how everything is rooted in your own white supremacy. Yeah, and and cultural Marxists. People are even going to make the case, even just the basic understanding of what the gospel is, is wrong. And it, they completely reframe it. And and it, uh, Vody, we've talked about on the show, Vody talks about a lot in his book, how it is a new religion, but it reframes everything. Sin, the, the human, the evil human heart, sin, the problem of fallen man is no longer the greatest enemy. That's no longer our biggest problem as a people. Um, and the solution is no longer the blood that Christ shed on the cross to atone for our sins. Now the problem is the system. Now the problem is this grand big system of white supremacy and the solution is no longer Christ. The solution is anti-racism. That's right. Listen, I, uh, I'm going to spring this on you. Okay. I have to do another show on this. Okay. I didn't get through it. And I li I'm not like saying like, oh, I really knew I wasn't going to get through all my content. I really thought I, I legitimately thought I was. And there's just absolutely no way. So forgive me. And I'm not trying to do this as a shameless plug, but it fits. If you want us to do an hour show, it costs about 75 grand every year, just in airtime. And uh, we can, well... We can barely afford a half an hour right now. But I'm just saying, like, if he wants to do more, then you have to give more. Like, it's like, wow, like, wow, look at that guy just asking for it. I'm just saying, if you want us to do <laughs> more, you got to get more because we don't have sponsors. We don't have products. We literally do this because people say, hey, I like your show. You're like, a, you're like the power of ears for the new generation. I believe in the next generation. I believe in equipping the next generation because if you don't equip this generation, this is the last conservative generation mm -hmm. that believes in Judeo-Christian principles. You could even argue that it's past, but we're fighting for it. And that's why you, that's why you donate to, that's why this ministry is different than other ministries. Mm -hmm. You just don't find guys that are in their twenties. I just, just turned 30 that are doing this, that are on direct TV and dish network, trying to, to warn what is coming, coming. Listen, people, it's coming. We're not going to get through it. We're totally out of time. Um, I don't even know how to wrap it up, really. I mean, we're just out of time. If you want to give to that, please do it. We're going to continue this discussion next week with CRT in the church. Why to be weary of reading Christianity Today, mm -hmm. one of the largest Christian magazines in circulation, and a proposed amend, uh, uh, amendment to the Constitution, <laughs> that being the DOA, the Department of Anti-Racism, just crazy stuff that's happening, and how the church should respond to all of it. We'll be talking about all of that next week. We'll see you next week. 